This is College Football Imperialism Conquest for Mars Edition. Every team has been abducted and teleported to a random location on Mars. The Martians are big college football fans. They just want a little piece of the action on their home planet. It's unknown whether the Martians came in peace or if they were hostile negotiators. But one thing's for sure, the NCAA has come to agree on terms to host a special last team standing tournament on Mars. Funny enough, the aliens were okay with us building stadiums across their planet to mimic the conditions here on Earth. So it should look and smell like Earth, but trust me, the stakes are much higher. It's for Mars. The NCAA threw me a little NIL bag to host this tournament, so shout out to you guys for the Doritos Locos Tacos. College football imperialism, you love it. I love it. Let's have some fun with it. Shout out to the guys in the community that have been doing it and inspired me on the concept. It's just my turn to take up the stakes and bring some creative twist to it. Here are the rules on Mars. In this imperialism, there'll be two minute quarters because two minutes on Mars is like two years for Martians. And the Martians love an underdog story. So we're incorporating the wheel of redemption in this imperialism, meaning when half the teams are remaining, we will spin the wheel of defeated teams and one team will get a chance at redemption. The stakes are high for me too, as I'll have to buy a jersey from the team that is the last one standing and wear it in a future bid. Okay, let's spin that wheel and see what team is up first. And the battle for Mars begins with Marshall. Coincidence? Marshall? Mars? Marshall? We have found Marshall on the map. Now it's time to spin the arrow, see what direction we're headed. Okay, we're headed down into our right. Since the arrow was perfectly diagonal as it could be, that means Marshall's gonna take up Alabama in game one. The battle for Mars starts right here, right now, and it's fourth down. The herd need to convert. There's only a minute 20 left in this one. Bama up by 10. They got the first down, that's big. Cam drops back, the lefty throws it across the middle, finds his man down into the goal line. Marshall with less than a minute to go. The planet at stake and they give a costly in over to Bama three turnovers that's gonna define the defeat Bama running out the clock in this one they win and it survive another round Marshall challenged Bama and lost therefore Bama gets that land the wheel has spoken coastal Carolina is on deck which direction they're going Wow, almost the same spot. We found Coastal, and they're gonna be going up against Wisconsin in this one. Down to the wire in this one with just a minute to go. First and goal, Mordecai and the Wisconsin Badgers. Read option, he keeps it. Coastal stuffs him. Wisconsin chewing all the clock, though, as they're confident they can just dwindle out the rest of this game. Coastal's got their timeouts, though, so I'm, I'm intrigued as to why they're not using them yet. Another read option, Tanner going in all the way laying the head down for six. Third and seven with six seconds left. Grayson and the Chanticleers, man, are just gonna have to let it rip and come down with anything. He did not see the man on his blind side sacked. They had timeouts, and so they use one, which is what I said earlier. I'm, I was questioning why they didn't use one when Wisconsin was just running off the clock. And another sack. Wisconsin defense says, game over. We want this planet. Wisconsin rolls one step closer. Coastal challenged, they lost. Wisconsin wins, meaning they get to increase the surface area control of Mars. The show goes on for the remaining teams. The wheel has spoken. Louisiana Tech is next. They're going to be challenging to the left, meaning Louisiana Tech has a date against the Buffalo Bulls. Louisiana Tech had their way with Buffalo in this one, and they're just trying to put the finishing touches on, handing this ball off. Buffalo out of timeouts, and I think statistically, yeah, it looks like they can go into victory formation and end this one. Louisiana Tech moves on. To the victors goes the spoils, and Louisiana Tech defeats Buffalo and takes their territory. All right, back to the wheel. Our next matchup will be, looks like Army or Southern Miss. Southern Miss will be the challenger, and Southern Miss is going to have to go down south. Looks like it'll be a battle of the birds in this one. Southern Miss versus Kent State. Kent State moving down the field up by three on Southern Miss. Can they finish this one with an ice? Wow, Gavin Garcia with the ice on this one is just about over. Southern Miss, out of timeouts, gets upset by the Golden Flashes as they're going to come in here and get the dub. Southern Miss, unsuccessful, defeated by Kent State. Kent State gets to reap the reward. The wheel decides once more, and they are going to go with Wisconsin, getting their second 
in-game action. Wisconsin is going to have to go south, which is a matchup against Penn State. This will be a good one. Wisconsin getting battle-tested early in this imperialism campaign. The conquest for Mars continues as Wisconsin goes deep. Is that a pick or a catch? Just an incompletion. Okay. Third down for Mordecai and the Badgers. He's going across the middle and he found a man for six. How will Drew Aller and the Penn State Nittany Lions respond? It's been back and forth in this one and they got to get something going. Just about a minute left in this one. He decides to keep it. Interesting decision there. Slides down for a few. Third and three. They're going empty on this one. Let's see if they can get a chunk play here. Going for it all. Forget it. He's got it, man. Wow. And that is six. This is fireworks. Drew Aller with a dot, and this extra point should tie it up. It's going crazy out here in Mars. See if Wisconsin can respond. They got 40-something seconds left. I mean, that seems like nothing the way this game's going. All they got to do is get this ball down into field goal range. And oddly enough, they're chewing the clock. Terrible clock management here. I've seen the AI do this in NCAA 14 a couple times, and that's definitely a pet peeve of mine because it's a tie game. 30 seconds left. You could get to field goal range. You have all your timeouts, yet they pulled this off. So uh, this game's going OT. Dropping back on second and seven. He's got a crosser. First down. This is a big third down. Stop him here. That's probably a field goal. And they stop him, but it's short. Are they going to go for it or just take their three? So Wisconsin settles for three. That's going to give Penn State a chance to win it all. First and 10. A little handoff and fumble. Oh my goodness. That was massive. What a play by the defensive lineman there to strip that ball free. Big man rumbling, tumbling down to the 10 and just short, but it doesn't matter. Wisconsin wins. Wisconsin 2-0 in the Young Mars campaign and they're taking more land over from the Nittany Lions. Who's gonna be next? JMU steps up. Okay, they're going up and to the left, which is towards Oklahoma. So we got a JMU Oklahoma matchup next. An absolute stunner here cooking up on Mars JMU up by 18 and that big run is pretty much gonna seal it JMU had everything working in this one 320 total yards a couple hundred more than Oklahoma and uh, Oklahoma couldn't afford to stumble early as that's gonna be deadly JMU successfully challenges Oklahoma knocks them out of here and gets that luscious space up north here we go another round on deck the wheel says Iowa Iowa has got to go down into the left Wisconsin's had two rounds Bama's back for a second round this time Iowa the challenger Bama is rolling up by a touchdown with two minutes to go in this one can they ice it Iowa down to their last time out you honestly just gotta sell out everything right here and it's a pass i would have lost and and so today this is a big third down a stop here from the hawkeyes gives them about 30 seconds left to try to score and they don't make the stop the bama running back it's rumbling for a big first down that's game tear down that wall bama's got some real estate the wheel has decided utah you're next. Headed straight to the left to take on Ohio. It has been all Utah in this one as the Ohio Bobcats have been struggling to muster any points. Second and 10, this team has got to pick up the tempo, but uh, I think it's three possession at this point and it's just about over, if not for sure, for sure, right there with the dagger of a pick. Utah advances one step closer to world domination. Let's figure out who's stepping up next into the challenger's court. Florida State. Florida State has got to go up north and slightly to the right actually means it's going to be a date against KU. It's a big third down here for the Jayhawks. They need to kick it into gear. Down by 10 against the Seminoles. And that's not how you kick it into gear. Jayhawks throw a costly pick. Florida State is going to have their path clear for victory. Okay, I said they'd have their path clear to victory. Well, they couldn't get it done on offense. And KU does get another chance here as he finds his man. What a one-handed snag across the field. Lawrence Arnold brings him right down into the red zone. Dropping back. He's going across the middle. He's got it. Touchdown, Trevor Wilson. KU strikes really fast. If they don't get this onside kick, I mean, with one timeout, there just really isn't anything you can do. Yeah. KU has been defeated. Therefore, Florida State gets to advance into the territory. Another spin, another matchup inbound. This time, it will be the USC Trojans. On the harsh Mars terrain, they're going to have to kick it out left. The opponent most directly to USC's left is Oklahoma State. So that's the next matchup. High scoring fest in this one. Oklahoma State threatening outside the goal line and touchdown. 
They have scored and are just about to tie this one up. What can this man, Caleb Williams, do? Projected top pick. He chooses to keep it with his leg. Slides down. He is moving down this field. So far, no issue here. Keeps it again. Honestly, his strategy is kind of smart because all they really need is a field goal. Got a wide open man. That's more than enough for field goal range. Oklahoma State Cowboys' dreams of conquering Mars are winding down just like this clock. 18 seconds left. Caleb Williams has been able to architect this drive. Interesting choice here with two timeouts to settle for the field goal with 15 seconds left. Uh, okay, you're going to give Oklahoma State a chance. Four seconds left and a dream for the Cowboys. Can they just heave one up for the win? Going for it all. No, that's going to be it. With USC holding on, down goes Oklahoma State and the Trojans get to capture more land. Both Oklahoma schools are gone, but who knows, maybe they'll have a chance at the redemption wheel as this wheel decides San Jose State is next. We're gonna have to look to the opponent to the right, and that opponent is Louisville. Intriguing matchup here on paper, third and inches for the Spartans, and uh, couldn't get the first down. Well, essentially it comes down to this fourth and one play. Hands off, and he's got some space. Bouncing around for a big first down. Never say never. If the Spartans can score here, this game is a whole lot more intriguing. Big third down looming. If he can take his team down the field and score right now, they might have a chance. And say goodbye to those chances. Another dagger of a pick. We've seen a few of those so far. Down go the Spartans and their land. Moving our way along. Next up, we got... Looks like Georgia. Georgia has to challenge the opponent to the left and up a bit. To the left and up a bit is Michigan. This is a big time playoff caliber matchup between the Dogs and Big Blue. All knotted up in this one, 14 apiece. Looking like Brock Bowers in motion. Let's see what Carson Beck and the guys can do. Will the 2024 national champs, Michigan, make a stop on defense or will the Dogs prevail? defense comes through they're settling for a big 50 plus yard field goal attempt right here can they nail it false start that's going to be bringing it back no longer in field goal range after that false start the dogs keep their offense out here and they're going to go for it no dropped and that ball is getting turned over what a big sack by big number 94 there defense steps up and that's going to give jj mccarthy and the offense a chance to win it bruh you're kidding me, McCarthy. Just throws a pick on his first play. And just like that, momentum swings back in George's favor. Let's see what Beck can do. Almost another pick. Dropping back. Found a man across the middle. That's Bowers. Another massive third down opportunity. Which side will prevail? Michigan gets the stop. Here we go. 30-something seconds left. He's going to have to work quick if they're going to have a chance at field goal range. Clock is just ticking, and, and they don't seem to care. The AI again prefers to take this to OT when they could just grab the game in their own hands. I don't get it. I guess this is what Michigan wanted, but it's a big third down here in OT. McCarthy keeps it. Smart decision. Dropping back. Quick throw there. He's got his receiver. Second and four. Just knocking on the door. It's a little bit of a play action. He's going outside. He's got his man. That looks like Roman Wilson. 4-6. Georgia's got a chance to respond. Starting off with an option there. And Beck does not make a good decision. Second and 11. This looks like a wildcat or something. Yeah, this is a wildcat formation. And it's going to work. Georgia getting awfully creative out here in OT. Can they get the first down, though? They do. Easily. And some pushing. This one's on the verge of going double OT unless Michigan defense has something to say. Dropping back. Beck throws it. Got Bowers. 4-6. Double OT between the Dogs and the Wolverines. Georgia gets the ball back. Bonus football for the Martians. I don't know who they're rooting for, but they're just enjoying it. Third and four. Little slip screen. Does it work? Doesn't work enough. Fourth and inches. What do you do? They settle for three. That is going to open a window for Michigan. Georgia back on offense? What did I just... Did it glitch? Excuse me? Oh, no, 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 no. That is not fair for Michigan fans. Okay, I ended my recording and checked the footage, and I'm not crazy. It glitched. It literally glitched. I've never seen that before. Georgia scored, and it gave them the ball back. Automatic victory? That's not going to slide, so... We're going to literally just run it back and have the simulation take care of the whole thing. Let the simulation commence. This is for all the marbles for Mars since the last one just got interesting with how the simulation handled it. But 
Michigan gets the dub after all. See, and we would have never known because they just gave Georgia the ball twice in a row. But Michigan wins this one. And I'm sorry, Bulldog fans, you're going to have to hope for the redemption wheel. But Michigan's moving on. And because Michigan wins, they get to capture the land. Let's get some more action up in here. Stanford's going to be making a move. Stanford's going to have to go to the right and a little bit up. When you look at this, to the right and up is Michigan. So they're going to have to defend back to back. Pretty much a no contest here for Stanford as they're just down 28-0. Absolutely getting dominated in every aspect of the game. And nothing they do here will matter. So... Michigan advances. Michigan holds, and Stanford has to say goodbye to their land. Here we go. Ole Miss, you're up. The Rebels are going to have to go to their right. Ole Miss to the right is going to hit on Kent State territory. Kent State defense holding them close, surprisingly, but Ole Miss up by a touchdown. Just a minute 50 to go in this one. Can really help themselves a lot with the first down. The herd in 22. Dart back against the wall. Drops it off to his running back. Kent State DBs make the play. They're going to get a chance. But that chance could really amount to nothing if the kicker nails this field goal here. Two possession game. Can't do much with that in one drive. The snap, the kick. Is it good? He nailed it. Third and five. Kent State fighting to the very last second. And they make a play and fumble that bag. Anyways, Old Miss defense scoops and takes it back. So yeah, we knew it was over, but Old Miss a little added extra emphasis. Kent State couldn't keep the conquest dreams alive for Mars, but Old Miss does keep the dreams alive and takes over some serious land. Arkansas State Red Wolves get chosen. They're gonna have to march their conquest up north. And by the looks of the arrow, that means they're gonna have to take the USF Bulls on. Big third down play here for South Florida. They're marching down the field, flips it off in time to the running back, but he couldn't get any space. Here come the Red Wolves down by four with a minute 50 to go. Let's see if they can muster something up. Third and seven, big play looming here. He takes off to scramble. It doesn't work out in his favor. Bulls take it over in Arkansas State Territory. What a read option there by the QB, just taking it all by himself. That was nice. And just like that, victory formation. Bulls are walking away with the dub. Down go the Red Wolves, and the Bulls get to move into their new spot. Back to the magical wheel we go, and it looks like Michigan State is on deck. Michigan State is going to have to march up north, and that means they've got a date with the Arizona State Sun Devils. Honestly, this is surprising. Arizona State giving them the business in this one. Third and 12, nothing going there. Arizona State's going to walk their way in to a victory. This is the universal white flag in the fourth quarter. Michigan State says, forget it. We're punting. We're out of here. So with that, down goes the border and down go the Spartans. Your Sun Devils have more territory. Who's got next? Cincinnati's got next. And Cincinnati's got to go up and to the right. Only one way for Cincinnati to go here, and that's against Miami of Ohio. Red Hawks with the slight lead in this one. Going to hand it off to the running back. Cincinnati's going to have to start burning them timeouts. Third and four for the Red Hawks. They're up by three. Cincinnati has no timeouts. A first down here essentially seals it for them. He's going to hand off draw. Got close. Fourth and one. Not enough. This is about a 50-yard field goal. Will the Red Hawk kicker get it? Here's the kick. He nailed it. Third and four with 14 seconds remaining in this one. The quarterback's dropping back. Thorne over the middle. He's got his man. So they're going to have to hurry up to the line and try to make some magic happen. Well, with just five seconds left, you really just got to heave one up here. Go all the way. Go for all the glory. And uh, no, Ohio says, I want glory. I want Mars. They come in to Cincinnati and get that dub. Bearcats go down. Miami has expanded their conquest. The wheel has spoken. Rutgers, you're up. Down into the left. There's one clear opponent in that direction, and that's Pitt. Rutgers just trying to put anything they can together here, but it's about over. 17-0 with a minute 30 to go. Second and 10, calling a quick audible. He's going to drop back and sling when he found an open man. First and goal. Well, fourth and goal. Gavin has not been able to dial up the offense needed to take on Pitt today. And that's going to cost him big in this imperialism conquest. Rutgers could not hold on. Pitt gets their land. The conquest continues, and we got Central Michigan up next. They are going to have to go 
to the left and up a bit. Just Nix, Iowa State, not enough for Tulsa. So it's gonna be Central Michigan, Iowa State. Chippewas better start chipping their way down the field, going up against the Cyclones, down 7-0 in this one. That's a good find, and that's a first down. Fresh set of downs, looking to jump. That's a screen. That's gonna be a successful screen here. He's got so much daylight in front of him. Just down into the red zone. Wildcat formation. Central Michigan trying to get creative as they want to keep this game going. Is that another Wildcat formation? It is. Okay, so they run the Wildcat two plays in a row, leading it to third and 13 for their quarterback. Let's see what he can do. He's going deep for the end zone. Does he have a man? No, fourth down. It all comes down to this. Will the Cyclones defense hold and keep them in the game? Oh yeah in a big way. Chippewas lose their spot after land and Iowa State is here for the conquest. Primetime and the buffs are up next. They're gonna have to put it to the test against an opponent up north, which is the Ohio State. Shadur and the buffs knocking at the door. Read option, Sanders for six. They take the lead in the fourth up against the Buckeyes. It is never a small feat to take down the Buckeyes, but let's see if the buffs have what it takes. Buckeyes forced to go for this one. Fourth and inches, easy conversion. They're gonna cruise right almost to midfield. Going out empty. Buckeyes dropping back, looking for someone. Got a receiver, only for three. Another big third down here. Can the Buffs defense make a stand this time? First down, Buckeyes keep it moving. Just outside the red zone, they are moving methodically down the field. And that's a big find for Starvin Marvin. Dropping back. He's got a man in the, in the open there. Nope. Holding on to that last time out. Buckeyes hurry up quick to the spot. Snap it. Is anyone going to get open? Buffs with a monster sack. That is insane. And the clock just keeps ticking. Six, five. They're going to not use their timeout. And they're just going to go for one last play. It's all coming down to right here. He's open. And he's short. Oh, my goodness. The buffs hold the Buckeyes at the one-yard line for the win. CU is going to upset the Buckeyes. Wow. And just like that, down go the Buckeyes. CU survives. You just got to love imperialism. And the next team up is my K-State Wildcats. Cats are going to have to play the opponent to the north. And that is going to be Cal. K-State making their first attempt at Mars Glory. And I love to see this. Go Cats, baby. As we're up 21 zip. Doesn't even matter what happens in the rest of this game because the K-State Wildcats are going to advance. Down goes Cal. K-State gets to claim the bigger chunk of land. Of the remaining teams, let's find out who gets to go up next. Tulane. Tulane's going up against the opponent to the left, which looks like Wisconsin's back on the gridiron. Getting a little scary here for Wisconsin, who is up against the green wave. Third and eight. Big play on defense, though. Wisconsin's going to get this ball back with a chance. Third and ten for the Badgers. Mordecai dropping back. Just gets absolutely walloped there by the defender. Tulane needed that. Fresh out of timeouts. Tulane is just going to march their way to victory with that first down. Tulane upset Wisconsin and all of Wisconsin's hard work out the drain. That is a lot of land. Wisconsin down. Tulane moves into a big space of Mars rock. Here we go. Looks like TCU has got a date to conquer Mars. They must first march to the right and slightly north. That is going to lead them to U of A. TCU says no problemo in this one. 17 zip even with this fourth down looming it doesn't matter and there it is the universal sign of surrender fourth quarter action one minute to go arizona says let's just punt this ball it's over onward tcu's conquest goes and well arizona it's the end of the line wheel says nc state the wolf pack must march to the south to the south of nc state is akron second and ten for akron it is all but done here just garbage time for the zips if there's anything they can muster, well, just muster it now. And they're going to pitch it off and just go backwards. So it's over. Goodbye, Akron. NC State is victorious. Let's spin it another round, shall we? It has landed on UCLA. UCLA has got to go up and to the right. Up and to the right to me looks like the USF Bulls. If you're a Bulls fan, you really want this third down conversion. Down by four with just a minute 30 to go. That honestly should have been picked. Fourth and 11 back against the wall. They'd rather get it done right here, right now in offense than let it leave it to the defense. And his own offense alignment hits him, but he still gets the ball off. A miraculous conversion keeps the Bulls' dreams alive. Getting close to midfield here, dropping back. 
QB keeper couldn't keep his balance. Third and eight. It's another big down to go here. It's a slip screen. He's got his running back. Does he got blocks? Just enough for a few yards. Setting up in the empty. He's going to go for it on fourth and three. Bowles keeps it in bounds. South Florida on third and nine. What can they do? That almost looked like a strip sack. Fourth down. Deja vu all over again. I think this is the third time a fourth down on this drive. Doesn't have it this time. So UCLA is going to walk away victorious. UCLA now has access to this funky shaped piece of land. But uh, it's their land nonetheless. The show must go on until one team is left standing. And Troy is going to be put to the test next. To determine who Troy is going to face, we are going to have to go left. And well, left is against Michigan. Third and two. Michigan already up 20 to zip. And they're lining up the empty split here. So... Uh, hey, guess we're not going to hand it off for two more clock. We're just going to go for the jugular. And I take that back. It became a motion option, which was a pretty nifty play. And that's going to easily get them the first down and some. It's going to be a tough road for opponents that are going to have to go up against Michigan. That's for sure. As time expires, they hand it off. Blake Corum, the emphasis, exclamation mark, touchdown. Troy in their little square is no more. Coming at you with the next pick it looks like it's going to be ulm they're going to have to go down south down south for ulm is going up against memphis ulm down by a touchdown forced to punt this one and they're putting it into their defense's hands to see if they can get another chance if the warhawks desire one last chance on offense they're going to need the stop now against memphis and couldn't do it no more timeouts that's game. Sorry, Warhawks. ULM is out of here. Memphis expands. As we spin the wheel once more, who's it going to be? It is Houston. Fitting that Houston, Space City, is going for the conquest on Mars. They're going to have to go down into the right. That means a Georgia Tech matchup. Fourth down for King, Georgia Tech, and the Yellow Jackets. Can they convert? They cannot. Houston we are clear for takeoff. Houston says, thank you very much. We'll take that. Spin it right round one more time. Vanderbilt, you are on the clock. Vandy is going to have to take this conquest to the left. That is going to put him up against Michigan. I don't believe my eyes right now. Vandy is up by a touchdown on Michigan. This is insane. Vandy trying to dial it in right here on third down. JJ doesn't want any of that. But what is going on there? Fourth and six. It literally comes down to this moment. Oh my goodness. Vanderbilt is one play away from winning. And they choke. Defense gets gashed up the middle for 12. Under a minute to go. I mean, this is a big play. I mean, it's third and short. He's got a man and he's got six. Colston Loveland into the end zone. Vandy, I badly want to see you guys make a Cinderella run in this Mars imperialism as you find a guy across the middle. That's nice. Try to get the team in the field goal range. You got time. You got timeouts. Let's do it. That's methodical. That's methodical right there. That's two straight good plays. Second and eight. I hope your kicker's got a boot because you need just a bit of more yards. That was almost picked. Massive play here. If you convert and get the first down, Vanderbilt is looking, looking good. Of course, they only get this wonky three-yard play. Overtime we go, it looks like. But Vanderbilt, I mean, you, you really had your chance. Good luck going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a juggernaut in overtime. Let's see if Vandy can even make this interesting. And hey, that's interesting. First in goal, who is going to come alive? Who's going to be the hero? Will it be you, number four? Running back, you could have cut it left. Yes, you do. You still find it. Patrick Smith, pay dirt. Michigan's got their back against the ropes. And Quorum going nowhere. McCarthy sends all the receivers out wide. He's going to just keep it, though. Up the middle, kind of a smart play. Offense did their part. Vanderbilt defense, who's it going to be? Oh my, McCarthy just the mean stiff arm. Third and short to go, and you know they're going for it on fourth down, obviously. So two plays really to get in, and it only takes one. Double overtime, back to the quorum they go, and he is just rumbling his way for a first down. I told y'all, man, I was worried for Vandy. They had their chance, and they just couldn't capitalize. Truly, I hope the Vandy faithful have some hope still, but man, I'm a pessimist right now. 
Vandy, Swan keeping it himself, trying to do his best McCarthy impression, and he gets six. Third and four. This is a big play, and they're going to jump it off to the running back. He's got enough space and some. Oh, man, makes a man miss. That is huge. Touchdown. Looks like they're just going to settle for one. I mean, I don't know. I would have gone for two. I was almost sure the ball goes back to Vanderbilt in triple overtime, but okay. Michigan's got it, and it's third down. This is huge. Third down. Make a play, and it's fourth down. They get him stopped short. Michigan for the field goal. Got it. So Vandy's got a chance to win. Oh, my goodness. After all the drama and the back and forth, triple overtime, Vandy has a chance here. They're going for it all. And he's got a man. 21-yard grab, first and goal. They are a few yards away from winning in overtime against Michigan. Something special. Something in the air. Vandy for the win. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. The Vandy did not want to go down without a fight. They needed this. You got that right, folks. Vanderbilt has knocked off Michigan and just taken this absolutely large piece of Mars rock. Are you not entertained yet? Well, we got more action right around the corner and it's gonna start with another Michigan school, this time Eastern Michigan. This team nowhere near as comparable as Michigan, but they're gonna have to go down into the right. Down into the right is a matchup with East Carolina. Eastern Michigan holding their own, third down, handoff, that's gonna be successful. First and goal on the gray turf, the Eagles looking to soar. That read option is gonna put them over the hump. Touchdown, Austin Smith. East Michigan beats East Carolina and the Eagles will soar on to the next. Down go the Pirates. Eastern Michigan gets some more land. Rock and roll. We got Utah State on deck. We have to go this direction, and we can go to our left. That's going to clip University of Houston. Big play pending here. Third down. Aggies need this one, and uh, they get it closer. Fourth and five just into the red zone. Tie this one up. Let's see if he can nail that. Got it. Houston, on the other hand, they want to end this game with at least a field goal. That sack's going to go a long way for the Aggies. All of a sudden, this is more difficult. Houston, though, big connection there for 15. Third and short. Will they convert? Keeps it himself. Makes a few people miss. That was nuts, and he did get it. Clock ticking fast. He needed a man, and that was almost picked. Third and 10. Dropping back. Looking. Dumped. Aggies get it close. Third and six. First drive in OT. Dropping back. Let's see if he can find a man get and get six. Does he get paid or here? No. Fourth down. They're going to settle for three. Houston can take it all right here, right now, if they can get to Pater. Second and goal. Another handoff. They just feed the man, and that's game. Parker Jenkins ends it. It's a little harder to tell on the map, but Utah State's out of here, and now Houston's got this, like, peninsula look. Is that another TCU matchup? Nope. Another USC matchup on deck. This time, USC is going to have to challenge down into the right. Down into the right is Buffalo territory, so this is going to be a fun matchup. Caleb Williams in danger here. Down 17 to the buffs. Should have Sanders in prime time have been just too much. Third down, dropping back, looking for anyone. He's got his man. Is that enough to get a first down? Not quite. CU is playing some complete football right now. Good defense and good offense. And they're going to get some pressure on Williams. He just can't get it done. Buffs advance. They beat USC. Buffs got challenged, but they'll happily rise to the occasion, take down USC, and move into this odd-shaped piece of land but it's hey it's a lot of land we have been doing this for a minute and it still feels like there's a lot of teams that we haven't seen yet and this is a team we have seen memphis memphis on the attack this time they're gonna have to go to the left which they can't go to the left so let's redo that okay we can go that direction it's like to the left and down but that's gonna be a matchup against nc state nc state took care of business in this one third down almost real pick but they're up by 10 points, and there's a minute left. Memphis out of timeouts, fourth down. This is really for all the marbles. Let's see if they can do anything here. Going deep and broken up. So NC State defense holds strong. That's going to help them advance. Memphis is gone. NC State has this nice piece of land. The show goes on, and Baylor is our next destination. The arrow for Baylor says to the right, to the right. And to me, that looks like an Ole Miss matchup. Ole Miss cracking at the door. First and goal. Let's just see if they do it. Yep, handoff, dart, literally inches away. Second and goal, dart hands it off. 
Baylor can't get to the edge in time, and that's a touchdown. Baylor in a little bit of a desperation mode here. Third down, you gotta connect. They find their guy, it's fourth and one, and you gotta convert if you want to have any chance left in this game. Old Miss defense just ate that up. Old Miss happily takes that border and takes Baylor off the map. Let's spin it another time. We're really gonna land on Houston again. We've seen these guys now for the third time. Houston on the attack, they're gonna have to go to the left and down a bit. The only option is the Eastern Michigan Eagles. It's a sorry sight to see if you're an Eastern Michigan Eagle fan. University of Houston has put in work today and just absolutely dominated. 21 zip. But just because we're a good sport, we'll see what the Eagles can do here on third and nine. But their dreams at Imperialism are coming to an end. Houston, look at this land. I mean, you guys got something cooking over here. Round and around we go. Texas Tech, you're on the clock. We got to send Texas Tech down south. There's Texas Tech in their little bit of land here on the far side of Mars going up against Navy. Navy in their play style going deep here, but no cigar. They just never had enough in the tank to keep it up with the Red Raiders. It's all Red Raiders in this one, and that should have been a pick, but that's going to seal it. Tech advances. Tech's land just got a little bit bigger over here. Wheels back, back, back. Tell a friend. UNLV is the school. What direction are they going? Down south. That means UNLV is challenging Florida State for the land. A little surprising in this one. We're seeing a Battle 0-0 in the fourth quarter. I think that's the first time we've seen this. And in UNLV, well, they got the ball. They got time. They got possession. All they need to do is just get this into field goal range. Using the time wisely, keeping it though, and getting dropped. So now they're going to have to speed it up a little bit because that was exactly the play they didn't want to have happen. Seminoles defense looking to keep the pressure up. Going deep. He's got a man. Oh my goodness. And he dropped it. I think that's a straight drop. That play could come back to haunt these guys. That receiver could have won his team the ball game, but let's see what happens here. Yeah, with rapid pace, Florida State is moving this ball down and into their opponent's territory. I don't really know why they're chewing clock now. Okay, are you confident in a 57 yard field goal? You might want some more yards. They're going for it all. Wow, that was risky. Second and 10, four seconds left. Are they gonna go for a quick one or shoot? Go for it all. OT, Univille knocking on the door, handing it off, going nowhere there. He just got stuffed. Four quarters of regulation wasn't enough. Overtime, still looking for the first points. Hand off, he's got it. Touchdown, UNLV strikes first. Third and six, what will the Seminoles do? Going across the middle, he's got a man, no, picked. That's huge. Rebels win. Oh my goodness. Massive upset here. It took to OT, but that'll seal it. Who would have thought that Vanderbilt and UNLV would be two of the biggest landowners right now? Army gets their first crack at imperialism. Army has got to go north, and that means they're taking on UTEP in this matchup. Army, just like their counterpart in Navy, have no shot here, it seems, as they're down 17-0, chewing all the clock, not a care in the world. I think they know they lost, so they're just kind of taking their time and trying to just practice for next year. I don't know. With that, Army is defeated. UTEP gets their land. Colorado slated for another matchup. This time, Colorado has got to go down into the left. Based on where you look at their land can mean a lot of different things, right? If they're down here, you could say Houston, up here, Ole Miss. But I think what takes up the largest land mass is going to be our next move, which makes the most sense. Colorado is going to have to play Ole Miss by that logic. It's crunch time in Boulder. Shador and the Buffs down by three with a minute 30 to go. Second and 15. This has got to be the drive. Third and 10, moving a tight end in motion. What can they dial up? Going for a nice play there. Coming back to the ball makes them a little short. Fourth down. But we already knew they were going for it. And here we go. This is it. Going for a lot more than just the first down. What a play. Touchdown. Tarverish Dawson. 52 yards gives them a huge lead. I kid you not. CU misses the extra point. And now that means Old Miss, all they got to do is get in field goal range. Third and four. What can they do? Hand off to Quinshawn. He's going nowhere. Or sorry, that's Ulysses Bentley, the fourth. Fourth down. My goodness. Game on the line here. This is a big field goal. This is trying to do some math. I mean, it's like a 55 yard or 54. Does he have the leg? That's the important question. And he missed it. CU 
survives again. I think this is the second time they have survived a nail biter. CU is staking their claim early, but all it takes is one loss. Onward we go to Illinois. Spinning that arrow, Illinois. We need to go up north. That's going to point us smack dab at Ball State. Ball State doing a good job playing some defense, but I, I mean, hey, field goal, it's still two possessions. It looks bleak. Illinois sealing this one out with another field goal. That's going to do it. Ball State falls. Illinois gets a little bit more breathing room and a bigger target on their back. Virginia with their first action of today. They're gonna have to go to the top left, which yep, that arrow is pointing directly at Arkansas. In a prime spot to cash in, Arkansas needs this one bad. Dumping it off, defense was all over that. Fourth and eight, KJ Jefferson and team going for it. Will they get this one? Nope. Third and eight, dropping back with the snap. Arkansas, wow, he breaks free but nowhere to go with it. 53 seconds left, Arkansas still got a chance. Less than 30 seconds to go. What will they do with this newfound chance? They're going deep, that's what they're doing. Wow, that almost was picked. Second and 10, you gotta keep taking shots. And that's what they're gonna do on the sideline there. Here we go, under 20 seconds to go. That's a first down. With eight seconds left, anything that's not a first down could be game ending. And exactly that, fourth and one, no timeouts, it's game ending. Virginia holds. Bends, but doesn't break. They get the win. Razorbacks lose. Virginia barely holds on. We got NC State again. I believe this is the third time. We can kind of work with that. In that direction, it's going to be UTSA. NC State and all the hard work that they put into this point is in jeopardy right now because UTSA is cruising in this game. 17-0 and making a big defensive stop. It comes down to this fourth down. Can they convert? and keep their dream alive no big pick road runners on top he's gonna take this one back utsa moving forward all it takes is one game and just like that utsa overtakes a good piece of land let's give it another spin all right byu is gonna get some of the first action of the day now where will they go they're gonna have to go up north and that points them in only one direction against georgia state georgia state trying to muster up a concerted effort here down by 12 it's looking a little bleak but if they hurry up and they cash in you never know third and six slant nothing happened really it's fourth down will georgia state convert or byu just take this one home they do convert but at what cost i mean clock is ticking second and ten they're gonna need a whole lot here and that is exactly what the doctor ordered you have to make this top on third and inches to even give yourself a chance and boom they do mathematically in this down by eight with 20 seconds to go no timeouts left yeah the clock is gonna run out here unless they get one last quick snap which they do miraculously but that's what they use it on it's over. Georgia State, thanks for playing. You wouldn't be able to tell because you're watching this right now, but this is day two and we're back. The show must go on. So let's spin the wheel and see who we start with. South Carolina, they must go and travel to the left. South Carolina traveling to the left means a battle against SMU. Low scoring battle in this one. South Carolina moving down the field, down by a touchdown. Can they dial something up here against SMU? Not sure what the strat is here to take up a lot of time time but um okay go off i guess maybe score try to tie it and, and get to overtime but anyways gamecocks going deep to the end zone that was picked off that was a costly pick right outside the red zone and they're just going to hand it off and get a first down so smew gets the dub down goes south carolina all right let's run it back see what the wheel decides looks like we're gonna have a matchup with Texas on the line to the right. Okay. Okay. And Longhorn's got to go play Mississippi State. Mississippi State down by a touchdown to Texas. They're getting close to the red zone and that's a big play that'll get him that much closer. Big third down with just less than a minute to go. He's got his man on the slant. Nope. That's deflected. Mississippi State forced to go for it on this one. Can the Longhorns make a defensive stand? He drops it off to his running back. He's got a wide open lane and he's going all the way. Texas has 37 seconds to work their way down the field and at least get a field goal for the win. They're throwing that one away. Third and 10. What will Quinn Ewers do? Slant fourth down after the punt mississippi state is now the one in the driver's seat they can control their destiny with a big offensive drive here going out in the empty formation he's got a guy across the middle and the first down 11 seconds left in this game they need to hurry up 
with one timeout in the chamber. I think they should save that for a field goal attempt, but a big play is needed here, and he's just wow, taking time to snap that ball. Can they get across the middle another first down? I don't think this is field goal range, unfortunately, but he's just throwing that one up deep to a receiver. Oh my gosh, realistically, that should have been caught. Longhorns, overtime, third down. What can they dial up? He's got a wide open man, and he could go pretty far there down to the five longhorns looking for a touchdown here that is not a touchdown that is a pick and that is going to be costly his defender gets in the way to stop the pick six but man all they need is a field goal to win this thing overtime rules starting at the 25 that's already a 42 yard chip shot they're going to try to play it safe that's minus three you absolutely don't want to suffer more yards lost in this situation because that field goal becomes a little unmanageable for the kicker but that's exactly what we need third and eight see if they get some yards back here oh my gosh almost turned it over no worries here though mississippi state can just win it with a kick down the middle here's the snap the kick it's good mississippi state upsets texas what a big upset okay you got that right texas is eliminated early in this imperialism and mississippi state gets to take over spinning that wheel one more time it is gonna be a utah matchup and they're gonna go down into the right which down into the right is against my k-state wildcats defense needs to make a big play for the cats and if you're utah well i mean i guess you hope for a first down uh but it's it's pretty far let's see what they can do cats bring him down with a big sack take the timeout with one minute and two timeouts to go can will howard and the cats architect drive that sets them up for a victory on the run and across his body to keegan johnson that sets him up for a nice 20 yard gain power doing it again with his arm wow that should have been picked why the ai logic still does this is beside me there were 40 seconds and two timeouts to drive and have a chance at winning and because of that fun stuff we got overtime and the utes are scoring six first will k-state deliver in the clutch we're gonna find out third and two another handoff he couldn't get there well it's all on the line on this play mars glory comes down to this will the cats still be in it no they will not utes win this one cats go down utah takes over here we go again ucf you're up going to the right ucf to the right is a matchup with lsu lsu ucf in a battle 14 apiece with just a minute 20 to go LSU down into the red zone. Comfortable chewing all the clock on this one. I think Jaden Daniels is completely fine with settling for that three. They better be smart with the clock here. I mean, they're making it awfully close. Going for it. QB keeper Daniels. Time expired. LSU fans, you got to be biting your nails now because that genius play call gives UCF a chance here in overtime to cash in and get the lead. Putting a tight end in motion. This is probably a handoff. It's a QB option, and he's got six. Plumley takes it in. LSU was literally set to win the game if they just took a timeout and kicked their field goal. But uh, hey, this is on you guys now. Two down territory, yes, indeed. But this is third and long. Got to get a big play here. And that'll get at least half of it back. UCF Knight fans, come alive for this one. You're so close to upsetting a top team. Can you do it? You cannot. Oh my gosh, you couldn't make the tackle on fourth and 10. Third and three, double overtime action. Daniel's looking for someone. He can't find it. That's probably going to be a field goal. It's no good. LSU misses their field goal in double overtime, and UCF's got an easy path forward for the win. Third and 10, Plumlee doesn't have to do much here. So uh, yeah, definitely don't throw a pick. Another kicker coming in to do his thing. Double overtime action for the win. Will he sink it? Yes, he will. UCF moves on with a massive upset. Unbelievable stuff. UCF downs LSU. So you know what that means. The north part of this land up here belongs to the Knights. Okay, Florida, your fate's in your hands. And that fate is taking you up into the left. Up into the left for the Gators is this odd piece of land that UCLA owns. Sorry, Gator fans. Your Gators are downed by the Bruins. And that's a nice play. Me and stiff arm. Second in inches at the half yard line. Gators should be able to plunge in here, I would imagine. And yep, they do. But Gator fans, you're probably going to have to wait for the redemption wheel to see if you get the chance. Okay, Florida is downed. So that means their little piece of land there 
is gone. UCLA expands. Okay, the wheel has spoken. Clemson, you're next. They are going to the right and down a little bit. That is Northwestern. This is going to be more than likely another upset. Imperialism is going crazy right now. And I don't think Clemson can really do anything about it. Time just keeps on ticking. And uh, we're about 30 seconds left in this one. Northwestern drops him for a sack. Third and goal. Clemson with the slip screen. Nope. Fourth down. They're running out of time. I think Northwestern has got this one in the bag for sure. But yeah, just for fun, with a few remaining ticks left, we'll see if Clemson can get a touchdown at least. And touchdown they get. Northwestern, big upset in this one. Clemson goes down and Northwestern moves in. All right, here are these last five upsets. Texas, Kansas State, LSU, Florida, and Clemson. Major teams going down in imperialism. Bama, let's get it. Bama's got to go down south. Down south is a date with Nebraska. First and 10. Bama, though cranking out this run what a vicious run 14-3 bama looking for just a little bit of insurance and uh this running back is putting in work third and inches alabama doing a great job dwindling all the clock in this one handing it off and getting the first and goal bama takes care of nebraska no problem so that means they get the land in this piece down here is all theirs. Colorado State has got a matchup and they are going to be heading down. That direction is right towards West Virginia. It's all just about done here. Colorado State effectively shuts out West Virginia 17 zip at the moment, punting it back to the Mountaineers, but 36 seconds, three possessions. It's, it's done. West Virginia is out of here. The Rams take more of that precious rock. Looks like it's going to land on Nevada. Nevada's going to have to look directly to the south. Nevada's going to have to take on North Carolina. Right at the end of the third, Drake May threw a costly interception, putting Nevada in position to just crack outside of the red zone. And that's a QB keeper. If Nevada can manage their time right and get themselves in a position to score, this could be another big upset. Both teams still got all their timeouts here. So the scary thing is uh, if you score now, I mean, that's a minute left for North Carolina to drive down the field. QB option, triple option, flicks it, just a couple. Wolfpack actually take a timeout of their own, which I don't think is a good decision because that six right there puts them up by three points for pending the path. And see, using that timeout still leaves a good amount of time left on the clock. Drake May is just going to keep it himself. Two timeouts, 30 seconds left, pushing midfield here. That's a lot of time to work with. Will the Wolfpack defense step up here or will the Tar Heels get it going on offense? Massive third down. He snaps it, goes across the middle. Got enough for the first. First and 10, receiver in motion. They're just chewing their clock here. Uh, hello? Anyone there? All right. Just leaving it for the last play, I guess. And uh, I don't know what they were doing. That's game. Nevada upsets North Carolina. Nevada with the big win, knocking off the Tar Heels. They get a little bit more land and one step closer to capturing Mars. Wheel has chosen Bowling Green. They're going to have to go to the right on the map, go towards Utah for the matchup. Utah, fourth and 22. HB draw. Turnover. Uh... The minute 17 left down to Bowling Green, that was really questionable. Believe it or not, Bowling Green just has to get pretty much a first down, and they're going to upset and knock off another high-ranked opponent. Knocking off Utah is going to be a massive resume booster. Bowling Green with that huge QB keeper sets him up in a position to go into victory formation. That is huge with big land implications. Bowling Green knocks down that little border and move out the way Utah. There's a new guy in town smoo and now we're gonna go left and up a little bit which looks like rice to me little in-state texas rivalry here battle for the mayor's cup rice has got the lead in this one up by seven and a seven point cushion is really all they need as they're in the driver's seat and can just chew the clock out on this one little run here little run there smoo doesn't have any timeouts smoo getting knocked off by rice maryland terrapin time going down south 
and that direction points them right at Washington. UW and Maryland, it's a battle out here with a minute 30 left. Maryland down by a touchdown. Number three drops back, finds a guy for five. Had a chance to catch Talia at the East West Shrine Bowl and he looked pretty good. So let's see if he can come through here in the sim. And that's a nice play to get his team down into the red zone. Still needs to go just about 10 more yards for pay dirt. Third and six, looks like an I formation, probably a play action. No, they actually hand it off on third and six and now it's fourth down. Hurrying very quickly to the line, empty split. He's got a receiver, touchdown. Second and 10, looking to dial up another one here. Just a little bit short, but it works. Just about midfield, another 15, 20 yard chunk play here. Gets a good shot for the kicker. They're just gonna dump one out and uh, final timeout taken. Driving just a little bit too late. Penix going deep with the arm. He's got some numbers down there and he's caught it. Oh my gosh, Denzel Boston as time expires for the win. That was crazy. Anything happens here, Penix Jr. is the hero with that insane fourth quarter thriller. Penix Jr. downs the Terrapins. And now their space is just a little bit bigger. Syracuse, let's go down south into the right a bit, which is gonna be TCU. Third and seven, Syracuse needs a first down and they do just that. I think it might be over for the Horn Frogs as they run out of timeouts and yeah, there's just another run. Syracuse takes out TCU and therefore they get their own little piece of land. Landing on... App State. App State's going to have to go up north. With the way the borders are here, I think that's going to just clip UAB. It's a tight one in this one as UAB is in no hurry to just chew some clock. Well, they snap it and they get the first down. So, hey, it doesn't matter, but they're in the driver's seat looking to win. The Blazers chewing every last second, handing it off to the running back. Surprisingly enough, UAB takes their own timeout, not App State because they want six. Does App State have any miracles in the tank? We saw Michael Penix do it. Not in this one, dropped. App State challenges, App State is defeated. It's UAB's turn to shine. Let's go with Wake Forest. Survey says north. North and slightly to the right is kind of up against the 49ers there. So let's take on Charlotte. Charlotte has got to put in work right here, right now. Down by seven to Wake Forest. What can they do? That's not going to help. You got to figure if they can't keep this drive alive, it's wraps. So third and 12, big play. He's got all the time in the world, but he doesn't see the guy in his blind side. He had so much time. Wake Forest pursues him down, drops him. It's just what the doctor ordered for Wake Forest, putting him in a really unfavorable position. Fourth and 19, he's just got to launch one. You're taking so long, but he got launched one. He's got a man in black. The Wake Forest Deacon makes the big pick and seals this one. Wake Forest challenges the Niners and is successful. We get to see Syracuse again. This time they are going to the left, meaning they will play Boise State. Boise State in a bit of danger in this high scoring affair, down by a touchdown and drop for a big sack. You already know the Broncos got to go for it here and uh, in essence, the game on the line. So what can Taylor Green do? Throws one off, he's got a man. Third and 10 at midfield. Taylor, what you got for us? We're back in the place where it started. Another fourth down. This one's important as all of them are. He's got so much time. Just couldn't get it done. That's a turnover. Syracuse is going to win. Well, that was kind of a bummer seeing the Broncos get one and done. But hey, Syracuse, congrats. You guys are rolling right now. Onward and upward. The wheel has decided to go with another Alabama matchup. Definitely making sure if Alabama wins it all that they're battle tested. Up and to the right, that's Rice. It's just unfair for Rice in this one as Jalen just keeps it himself. First down, no timeouts left, it's game. We'll have to see if anyone can make Bama's life hard, but for now, they have got a lot of land. We get to see a little bit of San Diego State action. Haven't seen that yet. And they're going to have to go on the conquest up into the left, which is going to be Air Force. Little Mountain West matchup. What a score in this one. Two to zero in the fourth quarter. Air Force does not want to keep it that way as they're getting pretty close to field goal range. But Aztec defense clamps up. Field goal kicker comes out anyway. He's got the boot. He thinks. I mean, this is like a 50 yarder and he's going to take a shot. It's gonna be tough. 
but he nails it. Well, the selling point for the Aztecs was probably their defense, and uh, we're down by one, three to two. What a score. Maiden and the Aztecs are gonna have to drive. No need to go uber fast. I mean, you got all your timeouts, you got time, just get a good tempo going is really what you need to see here as he just throws two guys aside, but gets nothing out of it. Lefty going for a nice chunk play. He's found him. If Maiden and the Aztecs can just get themselves some field goal range, that's all it takes. And he's going for a big play. Dropping back, serving the field. Yeah, he's got a receiver and that's a good chunk play. I don't really understand why he's chewing all the clock right now. I mean, unless he feels confident in this 60 yard field goal, which I wouldn't be confident in that. So uh, he better get this play converted here because uh, i don't know what he's doing but he's going for it all and he says forget the field goal that's six touchdown for the aztecs with seven seconds left that's a signature play here for the aztecs will that carry them further with some momentum down goes air force aztecs moving up the wheel says give me james madison where does james madison got to go to the left and up a little bit can't really go up but it's left enough we can take on fau for this one it's a battle in this one florida atlantic just wants to close it out up by one that first down will help a lot james madison for Fresh out of timeouts, they're going to have a hard time getting any momentum here. I think statistically speaking, JMU is eliminated because the difference here between the clock and the timer to snap, there's just not enough time left. So unfortunate for JMU, they don't have any luck in this matchup, losing a heartbreaker by one. JMU out of here. FAU on the come up. Now able to see some Wyoming action. These guys are located up here in the top right corner. So really, I think there's only one direction they can go. I'm not even going to spin it because the only opponent that would be is Pitt. Sorry, Wyoming fans. It's not going to happen this time. Pitt is just taking care of business and that big sack seals it. Seems like Pitt had no problemo with the elevation here in Wyoming as Laramie in this stadium is one of the highest up in all the nation. Just like that, the land has reformed and Pitt has taken their place. Hold on, what's that? I feel a disturbance in the frequency. I'm getting an alien transmission. It's time. Imperialism, losers, wheel, a chance for redemption for one of the 63 teams already eliminated. Who's gonna get a second chance? Let's find out. The team with the second chance is Southern Missouri. And now the remaining college teams are in jeopardy. We're gonna spin it and see who the redemption team, Southern Missouri, gets to face for a chance. And their opponent's Boston College. That might work in their favor. Bruh, I'm sorry. Did I say Southern Missouri? I meant Southern Mississippi. It's not every day you get a second chance. And so far, Southern Miss is, uh, well, you see what they're doing. Boston College is spoiling their, <laughs> spoiling their plans. In fact, Southern Miss does not have that dog in them. In a shortened game, he's already thrown three picks. It just wasn't meant to be. Boston College with the fight and the chunk play after chunk play. We tried. The Martians love an underdog and they really wanted to root for this dog in the fight. Boston College is superior right now. Well, congrats, Boston College. I mean, you get nothing for it, but just another day to breathe that fresh Mars air. Spinning the wheel again. Now that the second chance is over, back to the regular scheduled program, Louisiana Tech. They are going to have to go to the right and up a smidge which is Colorado State. Raging Cajuns got to be raging after that one. Big pick and Rams plunge right down to the goal line. Raging Cajuns about to give up a six. Easy. Raging Cajuns literally raging now after fumbling it on the kickoff and getting the Rams in position to score. Rams get a C to live another day. Got to spin it to win it. And the wheel says UCF you're back. This one's tricky because there's a couple lands, the Aztecs, Mississippi State that border it, but the one that borders it the most is Mississippi State in that direction. So we're going to go with the Bulldogs. UCF doing a good job holding on 10-0 with a minute left, but Mississippi State third in goal looking to get an answer. It's not going to be that. You don't score here. You're not going to win. And uh, this is a pivotal play in the game. He's got a man. He's going to fight. Oh, Man, that's brutal. Down to the one yard line. As long as this isn't a safety and UCF can push out of the end zone, which they do, this should be game. Just enough for the first down. And that, folks, is the dagger. 
Mississippi State is eliminated. UCF is happy to expand their territory. Let's go check back on Northwestern. Northwestern is going to have to go up against the Washington State Cougars. Massive play right here. Fourth and four. Washington State just handing it off. Trust in the running back. He couldn't get it. No, no, no. I don't agree with that take. We shouldn't have handed it off there. Northwestern is going to get a chance to just ice this thing out. Northwestern, will they finish him off right here? Well, hey, the defense says, let's get one more shot. Well, I uh, spoke too soon. I uh, hit the skip play button once, and I didn't realize they were going to fumble. And like that, unfortunate fashion for Cougars, but happy times for Wildcats. Northwestern continues to march on just this close to being a little bit of purdue action we got some houston going up slightly to the right houston's got a matchup with cu all nutted up seven apiece out here in houston shador sanders and the buffs going over the middle he's got a man that's a big play to weaver snapping one off here looks like a screen houston read that like a book but oh my gosh it doesn't matter he absolutely breaks free from two defenders edwards stud getting his team in position to win. Thanks to that big play from Edwards, they can kind of take the pedal off the metal just a little bit. You know you're already in field goal range, so you can just take it a little bit slower, get methodical piece after methodical piece. You don't want to go backwards. If I were Sanders right now, I'd be smart. Take up 28 more seconds of the clock. Eh, forget it. We want more and more they get. And just like that, five seconds left. Great clock management, chip shot field goal. What more can you ask for? Safe to say CU has now got the biggest piece of land on the board. But that's just one game and there are many more threats on the board. Just like UAB, they want to be deadly. To prove how deadly they are, they're going to have to go up and to the left, which is UCLA. Bummer, Blazer fan. Your team just didn't have enough in the tank. UCLA is just going to ground and pound this one out. And that was for a lot of land as well. So UCLA continues their expansion right smack dab in the middle of Mars. UNLV also has a piece of land. They're up. That's a battle against Louisville. Louisville can do a lot of damage on this play, but the defense for UNLV says not so fast. There is still hope for UNLV fans as their team has a chance to drive. Third and 10, looking for someone, anyone, not that guy. If you're gonna go to anyone, not that guy, because pick six to the house. Louisville says game over. Sorry, UNLV and your guys' massive piece of land. It now belongs to property of Louisville. Pitt gets to continue their journey. Pitt headed down to Western Michigan. This is not a drill. Western Michigan driving down the field against Pitt. Big pass and catch. 10 seconds left. Western Michigan's just going to kick it here. Third and goal. Not going to risk it any further. And bingo. That's what they needed. Man, I knew there would be some mayhem doing an all-team imperialism, but this is some next-level stuff. The wheel is getting smaller by the round, and we're going to have to go see what Nevada can do. Down into the left, Wolfpack are going to travel to UCLA. If Nevada has anything to do with smelling out this comeback, they need to stop right here right now because uh, stopping them is only going to give them like 20 seconds on offense, but... All for naught. UCLA ices this one, and they win another one. They've been tested a few times. Nevada falls, and these borders crumble. UCLA has got this extreme patch of land almost from the north to the complete south. Oregon gets their shot. Oregon traveling up north will play Miami of Ohio. Miami of Ohio just could not hang with Oregon in this one. Trying to get some last gasp effort here. Ducks just dump that man into the ground. Ducks take care of business as they should. And now they are expanding. The list of teams dwindling down. Georgia Southern going to get some action. They're going to have to go down south. Georgia Southern headed down south is going up against CU as underdogs. Oh my gosh, I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. CU down by a touchdown. Their land is in jeopardy. So much land, but Shadur going deep. Intercepted. Georgia Southern, the Eagles are looking for a massive upset. CU fans don't give up yet. Just get a stop on defense and you guys have a chance. You guys saved all your timeouts for the right time. Eagles want this first down bad. A blitz coming. It's fourth. You're going to get the ball back. In fact, the Eagle receiver going out of bounds saved you guys a timeout and back 
Like, you never left. You guys got another shot. Sanders looking to dump it off the screen. He's got a man and he's got some space. First down. Wide open receiver. That's Travis Hunter right there for the first down catch. Eagles may be regretting their decision to play so conservatively on their offensive drive because the buffs are shredding this defense. Second and 10 with 38 seconds to go. Sanders needs something big. He doesn't see the guy in his blind side dropped for a massive loss. That's a big play by Davion Rhodes. The Eagles can get one more big defensive stop and be out of here. Sanders needs to go for a big one here and he's going for it and he's got it wide open. Amari and Miller, five seconds left. Last gas here maybe, just throwing it off his back foot and that was terrible. Is Travis Hunter here gonna be able to take it back? Not quite, but he's getting it done on both sides of the ball. Eagles really blew the momentum they had in this game, and it's really all buffs this last <laughs> last couple drives, and Travis Hunter is that man. And there's the defense. Buffs are swarming. It is really rare to see a team kick into gear on all sides of the ball. Like, look at Hunter just play good DB, fourth down. And because of that monster sack in overtime, the Eagles are forced to go for it on fourth and 21. What do they have? He's going deep, going for a big one intercepted it's travis hunter gets a pick gets right back out there lining up outside he is that guy man it's crazy no doubt about hunter being a superstar and these buffs man have the field goal right here lined up to win it the kick nailed it and the buffs survive a scary situation buffs get to keep their precious land and add just a bit more toledo we're heading to the rockets to the left toledo's got to go up against two lane two lane marching down the field with just a minute left in this one they're down by a touchdown and that sack goes a long way for toledo third and long for the wave and holy toledo that looks scary but he shakes it off and just throws a dot to his receiver. Touchdown. Finn looking at a third and 11 here with just 15 seconds to left. Can he do anything? I think not. First and 10. Toledo's got a lane. Seven for Boone. Toledo looking to cash in. And that was not really open. Finn, absolute terrible decision. Two lane has the big pick, and that's gonna probably seal this one. Third and three, read option. He's got a massive lane, and he might just go to the house. It's gonna be game. Two lane dropping back. He's got a wide open man back there. Pushed out of bounds. That's good DB work. But is it gonna be all for not the running back? stuffed well we knew two lane all they needed was a field goal anyway so all that other stuff was really just extra this field goal for the win they got it two lane lives on taking out toledo and getting more territory boston college after their second chance redemption survival they get to go and be the hunter not the hunted they're gonna take on vandy i know i'm supposed to be unbiased on the sidelines here but vanderbilt man after their funny storyline and getting some land uh, I'd like to see him keep going, but it's about to come to an end. Let's be real. Got to give compliment to the Boston College defense. Not letting Vandy get a single third down conversion today. That's pretty big. That'll go a long way. Well, this is for everything. Fourth and seven. Can Vandy keep their dreams alive? Not a chance. Boston College is stepping up. So after fending off the second chance Southern Miss, they take out Vanderbilt. And all of a sudden, they're looking at a comparable size of Mars Rock. South Alabama gets their first crack. South Alabama heads down to face Kentucky. Fourth and inches, South Alabama getting risky with it. They just need inches and a flag. Is that a false start? Now it's fourth and difficult here in the red zone, but hey, don't matter on the slant. Touchdown, South Alabama Jaguars. Kentucky needs to work this ball down the field and that's picked. Oh, how the tides have turned for the Jaguars and that run is gonna almost seal this game. Critical third down here, convert this, game's over. He's throwing it, he's got a man. That's game. 40 seconds left. No timeouts. Kentucky. Yeah. Webb with emphasis runs that man over. Oh my goodness. Put an exclamation on it. Wow. South Alabama attacks successfully defeating Kentucky. Are we really going to see UCF once more? The wheel says so. UCF down into the right is a matchup against the Aztecs. UCF holding on to a six point lead. Aztecs in a little bit of trouble here. Third down. Maiden just keeps it himself. Lowers 
his head and trucks that man with authority. I don't know if Maiden was on the sidelines watching that last South Alabama game out here in Mars, but uh, I think he took inspiration from Webb with that big hit and he's got his tight end. Jalen Maiden putting the pieces together here. He's going to flick it out to his running back, and he's just got space. This is big for the Aztecs. Almost driving a little too efficiently. There's a lot of time left. UCF's got all their timeouts. you got to score. That's just what you got to do now. That's all that's left. He keeps it. Second and goal. He's going to keep it. Fumble. Oh, my goodness. The Knights survive after a costly Aztec turnover. Good effort by the Aztecs, but effort doesn't equal wins. UCF had the better performance today. Time for some Hilltopper action down south. You know what that means. Western Kentucky takes on CU. All defense in this one as it's still 0-0, but the buffs are threatening. Chewing clock, doing their thing. Shador keeps it himself and gets in for six touchdown buffs. Hilltoppers haven't been able to put anything together on offense in this game. And he's just going to go deep. Maybe he'll find something, right? No, he's clamped. Last chance, Western Kentucky. What can you do with it? Fourth and 14. And that was not a good call. Buffs win. Well, I was trying to finish this one. Internet went out tonight. So I guess I'll catch y'all on day three. Not that it'll make any difference for y'all watching. But if you're enjoying it, man, your support would mean a lot. We're back into the imperialism map. And Western Kentucky's out of here. CU survives and they just keep it going. No need to waste any more time. Let's jump back into the wheel and see who we got up next. Oregon down into the left is a border conflict with Bama. Wasting no time to jump into an extremely close one here. Bama in the Ducks first down. This would be massive for the Ducks if they can take out Bama and uh, they're on their way. Oregon and Bama are always two legit contenders so someone's got to go down in this version and Bama strikes with a massive 32-yard touchdown to Benson. Third and eight for Bo Nix and the Ducks. Can they get themselves into a position to win? Fourth down, Bama's gonna get a shot. We got a third and six looming here. What will Miller do? He wanted to go deep, but he's dropped for a big sack. Ducks survive for overtime. Third and eight. Bo Nix dropping back. And the defense is just come to play today for both sides. Rather unfortunate for the Ducks. They missed the field goal and Bama's already in the goal line. They really don't have to do too much. They don't need this touchdown. All they need is three. Very, very short field goal. No excuses for missing this one. And Bama's going to advance. We thought Oregon had a chance, but they just couldn't figure it out in crunch time. Bama moves over just a little bit more. The Lobos get a crack at it and they're gonna go down south. That means the Lobos are taking on the Roadrunners in this thriller. Third and 16 for the Roadrunners up by one point. The Lobos kicker missed the extra point and they need to make a big play here and that stop will give them a chance. So much for that chance as it's third and extremely long. And oh my goodness, I take my words back. That's a big play. Can the Lobos keep this drive going across the middle once more? They got him and they're pretty much in field goal range. Second and 10. Just getting something small there, and that's exactly what they need. Just an incremental gain. If I'm the Lobos, I'm not trying to force this thing too hard. Really, I would take some clock down and just try to go for five, six yards. Doing exactly that, they get the snap off, throw one off to the receiver, and what did I just say? Five, six yards? Well, they got seven. Spiking this is a good call, setting up for the game-winning kick with just a few seconds left. Well, it looked improbable, but the Lobos drove down the field, putting themselves in a position to hit this game-winning field goal. Four seconds left. Here it is. Here's the kick. The kicker nailed it. They're going to win. Lobos upset the Roadrunners. From their small quadrant to the big leagues, Lobos all of a sudden occupy some space. A little bit of Texas Tech action. We're heading up north to play Auburn. Texas Tech came up north to Auburn. They saw. They conquered. No problemo here. Third down. Doesn't really matter if they get stopped or not because they're up two possessions and I don't think there's any time for Auburn with no timeouts to come back. Well, Texas Tech takes out Auburn and now has a good little strip of land. The action has been nonstop. Let me know in the comment section what's been your favorite matchup so far. Temple, the Owls will be going up against, I just noticed there's two Owl teams next to each other, but Temple will be going up against Bowling Green. Third and inches, Temple looking for the first down, flicking it to the running back. That's a great play call. 
Going to get them a good position. Owls handed it off to the running back. He's plugging his way through for six. Second and four, just a minute to go. Read option seems to be a popular play for teams in the red zone. Temple with the methodical fourth quarter drive, and the quarterback is stuffed there. Plenty of time, plenty of timeouts to play with, and that is a wonderful read option executed there by Warner. Touchdown, Owls. That's another kicker missing their extra point. Don't know what's up with that, but Bowling Green can win it with a massive Hail Mary miracle and no more dinkin and dunkin you need to let it rip right now go for it all and uh, just not enough time to get it off temple wins bowling green with this luscious real estate up north loses it to the temple owls western michigan we're back Western Michigan has got to go up against the Mean Green Eagles. Western Michigan with the slight edge in this one, but it looks like the Mean Green Eagles are driving down the field, and that connection will get them just outside the red zone. Will the Broncos make a defensive stop, or will the Eagles be soaring their way out of here after this one? Under a minute to go. Another handoff. That running back had some room. Third and short. A lot to play with, I believe, on this down. Let's see if they can get it. Dropping back. He's going to the outside. That is picked. Oh, my goodness. Western Michigan DB gets up for that one, making the acrobatic pick. Western Michigan winning a couple matchups in this Imperial run, something I didn't have on my list, did you? Not North Texas, but Northwestern. Northwestern is gonna head up north to play the Sun Devils. Sun Devils up by a touchdown, shutting out Northwestern. They can finish this one off with a first down to ice out the rest of the game. Northwestern's out of timeouts. Dropping back to pass. Will he find someone? He is dropped for a big sack. The punt has pinned the Wildcats up at the one yard line. So they got to go 99 yards to get a touchdown and tie this up. Massive fourth and eight for the game. They cannot convert. Arizona State continues on. Able to knock off that border. The Sun Devils keep it alive. Back to the Illini. That direction gets them face to face with Louisville. The fighting Illini are putting together a drive to keep their imperialism dreams alive. Down by four. And, uh, well, those dreams are as good as dead. Costly pick at the end. Illinois goes down. Louisville keeps growing. The wheel is really wanting to test Western Michigan some more. Down into the left a little, one that they share the most border with, I would say, down into the left is Syracuse. So that's where we're going. Western Michigan going for it all here. Fourth and 10, down 7-0 to Syracuse. They need this bad. And the receiver fights and lunges. Gets 10 yards, but he's short by inches. If Western Michigan defense can hold strong right here, it might not be the end of the world. And boom, what a play. The downside is that we're pinned back here within the three yard line, but that's a huge connection to the receiver and he almost broke free. Blake Bozma wanted to put the Broncos on his back. He said, we're not done here yet. Let's see if they can keep dialing something up on this drive. 27 passes, four rushes, wow. They've been forced to pass all game long. Nice way to shed through a couple tacklers. Up to midfield. They're hurrying this thing up. What can they draw up here? Another great connection. Are we witnessing a little bit of a Bronco comeback here? What can they do against the Orange? Going across the middle for a big one. And just like that, the comeback hopes are snapped. The Orange with a big pick. And he's going to push it all the way back to midfield. It's over. We are seeing a lot of costly picks end the game lately let's go check on colorado state up north for the rams that borders ucla so we got a rams ucla matchup absolute bummer for rams fans as ucla steam rolls their way through colorado state ucla looks deadly rams have to say goodbye and just look at this piece of land here in the middle that ucla has captured all right back to arizona state we go up into the left arizona state now takes on the lobos lobos down by six against the sun devils here in arizona they need a big play and uh, that's going to give them a good amount back and they'll probably go for it and have a better shot at converting it was my man luke wysong with that catch and if he wasn't catching the ball from Mahomes, he's still getting the job done here turnover oh man christian washington fell just short Sure, and the Sun Devils take over. Just a little too late here for our Lobo friends. Sun Devils can just kill the clock and uh, do it with emphasis. Lobos inherited a lot of land, but inherit land no longer. Sun Devils are taking over. Virginia Tech's time to shine. Virginia Tech 
Old Dominion battle up next. It seems like Old Dominion never really stood a chance in this one as they're going to go for it here on fourth down in their own spot. Yeah, that's a big play, but it's just too late. Minute 30 left. I mean, Old Dominion's got to do something absolutely crazy, even more improbable when you're taking sacks like that. Well, fourth down is upon us and he's going deep for it and he's got a man down the sideline. He's going to go all the way. So I know it said it's improbable, but it's not impossible. I can't say I've actually seen the Sim recover their own onside kick. Like they just kick it like that way too aggressive. And there's never really a chance to recover. Old Dominion defense was in the process of making a stop on Virginia Tech's next drive. But look at the time they're going to lose out. Down goes Old Dominion, Virginia Tech has finally put themselves on the map. Texas A&M up in here. Texas A&M heading to the right. That's going to border Alabama. So Alabama, just because of the sheer size of that land, has many more threats, and A&M is now one of them. Bama is just way too good up in here, doing too much for the Aggies to handle. Third and goal. Will they cash in? Just to put an exclamation mark on this one. Well, good defense by A&M. Unfortunately for the Aggies, with no timeouts left, and now going to be down by 14 after this field goal. I think it's out of reach. Another one bites the dust against Big Bad Bama. Who is going to step up and stop Bama, if anyone? It won't be Virginia for now because they got to go play Louisville. Cavs down by a touchdown, but they're not out of it yet. They got an opportunity here to get down and score. Second and 12 after that sack. But across the middle, he's got him. First down, they're just outside the red zone. Tony Musket with the efficient day for the Cavaliers, looking to do a slip screen here. Defense was all over that. Second and 14, another slip screen, and the defense all over that again, except this time the running back has something to say with those stiffies. Couple mean stiff arms later, it's third and five, and Musket's dropping back and throwing that one just out of bounds. The big fourth and five, here we go. Slant, he's got him, and another receiver just short, losing it for their team. Like Bama, a little bit to a lesser degree, Louisville keeps winning as well, and they're knocking out Virginia. If not one Virginia team, it's the other. Virginia Tech's up. Will they survive, unlike their counterpart? To find out, they got a battle against Indiana. Indiana trying to muster up something here last minute, but it's all for naught. Virginia Tech defense has only given up one passing completion to the quarterback from Indiana, and he's not going to complete that one either off the field goal post. Virginia Tech gets to keep the dream alive. Wake Forest. Wake Forest taking on the Miami Hurricanes. Fourth and 17. Wake Forest needs this one, and they're not going to get it. Hurricanes clamp up. Miami walks on in here to Wake Forest, gets the job done, and trying to put the feather in the cap. Big run right there by Parrish. Defense playing for pride at this point. Can they not let him into the end zone? And they'll hold. Just like that, Hurricanes tear down that border, and their part of Mars is all the more. All right, we're going to see some Middle Tennessee action. Middle Tennessee heading down and slightly to the left. So because there is a slight left skew, that I think is going to put them up against Tolstoy. Tulsa. Tulsa ain't here to mess around. They're not here to make friends. They're here to compete and putting a whooping on Middle Tennessee. They are with this field goal. They're going to be up 24 zip. Universal sign of defeat with 29 seconds left in this game. Middle Tennessee's waving the white flag and the Blue Raiders are punting. Tulsa and Middle Tennessee finally getting their first action and Tulsa comes out on top. We're going back to Boulder. CU heading to their left. The school that borders them the most on the left side is Arizona State. So Sun Devils buffs. It's a dog fight in this one. The Sun Devils just trying to keep up with the buffs are going to hand it off to the running back. Third and short. 52 seconds left in this one. Dropping back to pass. They found him, but he's two yards short. This is a big fight fourth down looming what is going to happen and the buffs defense major sack turnover it's over for the sun devils see you pulling off an impressive streak of wins and they got a giant piece of land to show for it let's go ahead over and check on the owls Owls are going to have to go up and take on Syracuse looking to convert keep the drive alive keep imperialism alive they get it. Great connection to keep things moving against Syracuse here. Nothing there. Syracuse going on a little bit of an impressive run themselves. Stop the run. FAU might be trying to get a little too fancy schmancy here. Uh, let's see if they can convert this fourth down. And they hand it off again. Oh my goodness. They live and die by the rock. And it's over. 
Syracuse is going to win this. I'm sorry. I spoke a smidge too soon, not realizing the Owls had all their timeouts, but uh, now they are going to lose because that is a dagger. Solid run right now by the Orange, and their expansion just keeps on growing. Texas State, I believe this is their first bit of action. Able to hide out for pretty much all of this imperialism so far. That direction up into the left is going to clip them up here against UCLA. So we're going to have a Texas State UCLA matchup. Third and four for the Bobcats midfield. Can they convert and keep this thing alive? They get the pass off. Oh my gosh, short by one yard. You already knew they were going to go for it. Fourth and one, big play on the line. The game's right here. And he's got an open man. Wow, what a connection. TJ Finley not having the best stat line in the game, but he is a unique athlete in real life at six foot seven, I believe, as a quarterback. He's got a big frame, big body. I think he originally went to Auburn, then transferred to Texas State. And now I think he hit the portal again, if I'm not mistaken. Finley, though, is one reason why Texas State won their first ever bowl game just this last season. And let's see if he can do it here in Imperialism. Another massive fourth down right here. Fourth and two. What does he dial up? He's got a quick slant and his receiver drops it. That's a turnover. Costly. This play right here dictates everything. Does Texas State get one more chance? They need to make the hold on defense. Here comes the pressure. Really no pressure and a wide open receiver. UCLA wins again. Texas State's time to shine was short-lived and their territory is no longer. Boston College gets a crack at it. There is an opponent to the right and that's going to be Louisville. Louisville taking care of business in this one. Not a chance as Boston College down by a couple touchdowns. It's all but said and done here. Fourth and nine. Need something here. They don't get it. It's over. Boston College with a lot of land goes down to Louisville, who is also just on a roll this episode, capturing a good amount of Mars. Louisville again gets forced into back-to-back -back action, really putting these guys to the test. And that test is headed to NIU. Louisville up by six. They want a little bit more, but they're not going to get it fourth down unfortunately for niu louisville cashed in a field goal and it's fourth down and uh they don't get a first so it's over louisville just keeps it pushing see you again i can't make this up they just want to make sure cu is truly battle tested i think tennessee has the most square space here in Colorado's territory, so it only makes sense that they play Tennessee. CU is no joke in imperialism for Mars right now, as Tennessee's gonna go deep, and Travis Hunter's there to deflect that one. They have just had it working, and they're looking for more. Tennessee down by 11, going to the end zone. This time it's not deflected, it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Prime time in the buffs, man. The hype is real around this squad, and I'm starting to believe as we get deeper and deeper into this imperialism run. They not just coming anymore, they're here. Tennessee officially knocked out. All right, we get to see Tulsa again. Going up into the left will be a matchup against UCF. Tulsa trying to muster up a big drive here with a minute and 10 left. If they can score quick, there might still be a chance, but UCF defense denies him third and long who's gonna budge who's gonna come up big looks like the defense fourth and six what's gonna happen here will Tulsa strike for six or is this game wraps that's a wide open six touchdown Devin Williams and it comes back to haunt Tulsa they had to call one timeout after that sack and the last drive in this fourth down, it doesn't matter. Clock is going to run out. Tulsa strikes and gets close, but no cigar. UCF holds on. Are you kidding me? What's up with the wheel in CU right now? They really just can't let it go. This time, they're taking on UCLA, their biggest matchup yet. Like, probably everyone expected here a close game. CU up by seven. UCLA looking for a score, and that's going to get into the goal line. All out of timeouts, though. UCLA hurrying up, wanting to cash in. Maybe not too quickly, I, I would imagine, but let's see what they can do. The running back, they got him. Six. UCLA right back in it. Well, let's see if we see something in this game like we've seen all imperialism. Shador and the buffs find a way to drive when it matters most in the fourth. If I've learned anything in this imperialism, it's that I have a pet peeve against how the clock is managed by the AI when they get down to midfield. This is what I'm talking about. Clocks expired, so they're forced to go to the end zone for dramatic fashion, and it's overtime when you could have won it with a field goal. I guess it's only fitting that a battle for so much land goes down to the wire play action across the middle he's got him 
touchdown. See you back on top. Second and five, UCLA handed it off. That's a first down. This game very well could be on its way to double overtime, but UCLA has to score first and they're moving it. Second and inches, my money's on another handoff, if we're being honest, and I would have lost all my money. Touchdown, pass. I think CU was expecting the run. Didn't see that coming. Here we go. Double overtime kicked off by the Bruins and the running game is just working too well. In motion, they hand it off once more. I am not surprised. They love handing it off right now. Back to pass. The big pressure gets there. CU with a massive play on defense. They just need to hold here on third and 12. Can't give it all back. And they're going to get another sack, holding them to a field goal. We've seen some kickers miss it, so we're going to see if this kicker for UCLA can nail it. He does. I go Sim to flip the sides again, and it did what it did like way back in like the first part of this imperialism. It was Georgia, Michigan, and they gave it back to like Georgia or something. And they just screw the other team over. That's just not accurate at all. Don't buy this. This is not accurate. I didn't skip any plays. UCLA scores a field goal and gets the ball back. Makes no sense. So we're going to have to resim this whole game. All right, take two. Another uber close one here. See you up by a field goal. I think if I had to find another thing that I've learned by doing all these imperialism matchups is that, well, that's a couple times. I never experienced that OT bug. That last run was massive for Shador and the buffs because now UCLA out of timeouts, I don't think they have much they can do to stop this. This right here should be the last play of the game. So UCLA is gonna go down to the buffs, six to three defensive battle in this one. And with that massive implications, this whole border crumbles and UCLA is defeated. CU has an insane amount of land, almost half the map it looks like. We're gonna go back and revisit the Temple Owls. Up and to the left, if it were directly left, I'd say CU, but it's up and to the left, and that makes me say Miami. Miami, when they've played a few games, have looked pretty scary, and again, they're putting in work up by a couple touchdowns. When I did a March Madness series as my first ever series starting out YouTube here in the college football space, Miami made it to the final four. And speaking of March Madness attorneys, I'm gonna probably have to jump back and do a, another variant of that. Cause well, <laughs> looking back on the first one, it's kind of scuffed. 30 seconds left. This will be the deciding play. If it wasn't already decided already, first down and we're done here. Miami gets to enjoy this Northern stretch of land and uh, yeah, they're feeling pretty good. UTEP, it's been a minute. Headed up north, Miami is back in action. UTEP's got their back against the ropes. Miami up by a touchdown, looking for some insurance points. And this running back man, Henry Parrish, is a dog. Parrish has been an X factor in every game I've seen so far from Miami. Third down, hike, touchdown, Parrish. There's that man again. So UTEP defeated Miami all of a sudden going from just a little sliver of land in the top left and now has a big piece of land. Sometimes that's just how it goes in imperialism. And Louisiana Tech, a team we haven't heard from in a while, now has their shot. And they're gonna be going up and to the right a little bit, which is prime UCF real estate. Somehow, some way, against the odds, Louisiana Tech is playing strong in this one. Third and five for UCF, dropping back to pass. He's got a man, first down. UCF with a few wins under their belt in jeopardy against Louisiana Tech. Hurrying up, trying to maximize the time they have left. Going to the end zone, he's so open, wide open, and he didn't get a toe down. Oh man, almost cashed in, and now they have to settle for a field goal, which they nail. Will the AI get this onside kick? Bro, they got way too much leg on it. Third and nine, can ex-Boise Stater Hank Bachmeyer lead his team? That is going the wrong direction. Well, I guess you'll just have to take my word for it, but on the very next play, Plumley from UCF throws an interception and Louisiana Tech, Bachmeyer and co. win. And just like that, after waiting in the wings for a while, UCF has to say bye-bye to all their progress because Louisiana Tech just vultured it. Hawaii Warriors get a chance. Up and to the right means they're going to intersect with this border that Alabama owns. I kid you not, I literally feel like I haven't seen any offense all game from Hawaii. They got a chance now and just prove my point some more. Another big pick. This offense is garbage. Honestly, even with half a roster and half their guys at the beach, no problem here. Hawaii is gone. Alabama just cruises. Mizzou with a chance to get in on the action. Up into the left. 
Mizzou is going to go up against Syracuse. Seven zip. Syracuse forced to go for it. Fourth and 10. Dumping it off. Can he get past that defender? He can. And another one breaks a couple tackles. Isaiah Jones was hungry for that first down. Garrett Schrader and the Orange are going to have to dial something up because uh, they need some momentum. And that's a great start. Second and 13. Receiver in motion. Minute to go. He's dropping back to pass. He found his man. Dropping back. Schrader keeps it himself. Gets through defender. But no. Oh, last second grab the quarterback for Syracuse loves to tuck it and run will he do that again here on fourth and one he does and it works this time for about eight yards Schrader is injured that didn't look good so now the backup for Syracuse it's all on your shoulders now he connects well Carlos Del Rio Wilson does it get any bigger of a stage than this for all of Mars glory, your team has worked hard to get here. No pressure at all. Good luck. You got it, man. He keeps it, and he is going to get close. Choosing to save their timeout and hurry this one up on fourth down. The orange are quick to the line. Dropping back to pass. He's got a man. Oh, my goodness. What a stage for this young man. The backup quarterback comes in for Syracuse and wills his team to an overtime contest here. Mizzou running hard for that first. The underdog in me just wants to see that storyline shine, but hey, let's remain unbiased because Mizzou has a good shot as any. Second and six, handoff. He's gonna get dropped. No, I was gonna say he was gonna get dropped many yards back, but he fights. Third and three, if the defensive coordinator for Syracuse has got anything special, now is the time to reveal it because it's a slip screen and they snuff it out. They're gonna get a chance here to win. No good. Talk about Mizzou implosion. I thought for sure from a chip shot location they had it. Oh man. All Syracuse had to do was get a field goal and he throws a big pick. This game's going to double OT. On the topic of implosion, Syracuse does a big no-no. You gotta have short-term memory and Del Rio, it is your turn to shake it off because we need you to score for the Cuse. Going up against Missouri defense is no small task. As you can see, they're just trying to hand it off. Is the quarterback back in? It looks like that injury wasn't as serious after all. He musters up some strength and comes back in the game. Syracuse settling for three, so now Missouri can win it with a touchdown big stop here on defense would almost guarantee triple over time but if they get the first they don't he missed a chip shot earlier when i sim so i can't put anything past him on this one triple overtime third and 16 mizzou's got to get out of this deficit and the q's defense is all over him not trusting their kicker this time around they're going for it on fourth and 19 and just hand it off in triple overtime terrible 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 decision well syracuse you don't have to do too much now and the wildcat was probably a good play call as you just need a few yards, kick your field goal, and you're out of here. Dropping back, quarterback keeper, runs through a man, and oh my goodness, for the win. That quarterback came back from a leg injury, lowers the head, and boom, six for the win for number six, Garrett Schrader. It looked like Syracuse was going down for a moment there, but uh, they hang on to beat Mizzou. Notre Dame finally can't hide in the shadows anymore. They have to go up against Louisville. Louisville has been so strong, all imperialism, and now we're seeing them on the brink of extinction. Notre Dame just chooses to come out of hibernation and say, yeah, now's our time to take Mars. They played their cards right. This one's already over, but it's for sure over, over if Louisville can't convert on this play. Fourth and two, contested ball, picked. And just like that, imperialism be wild in out here as Notre Dame finally comes out of the shadow and says, hey, we'll take this massive piece of land from you. Thank you very much. It's a coming out party as Oregon State is also making their appearance out of the shadows now. Oregon State's gonna have to go down and play Purdue. Who you got in the Battle of the Bees? Boilermakers or Beavs? I don't know. It's uh, looking like the Beavs right now on defense are making a play. If the Beavers can make a big stand right here on this play, I think it's going to go their direction. And he's going for it all to the end zone. Not picked, but still turnover nonetheless. Purdue ended up getting one last chance because of their timeouts. And as you can see, clock is expiring. He's just going to have to go all the way and hope for a miracle. 
he caught it nope out of bounds but it's game beavers have life and they are making their way at the right time this wheel has gotten a whole lot smaller we're down to just a handful of teams and it looks like louisiana tech's up all right so we got a down and slightly to the left arrow and it's kind of hard to tell because they border so many territories but i think the most bordered territory downward would be Iowa State. So we're going to have a Louisiana Tech, Iowa State battle. Iowa State making a drive down the field, but hold on now. Who let Louisiana Tech cook in this one? They're up by three touchdowns. Louisiana Tech has been on a little bit of a roll, surprising me on both sides here as a massive strip sack. Defense steps up. They're playing some good football at the right time, and they're going to unlock a new territory. Iowa State gets knocked off, and look at the land Louisiana Tech now owns. Wheel has chosen Minnesota, and I see you guys down in the bottom right corner. It doesn't matter which direction I spin. You're facing Bama no matter what, so good luck. Minnesota working the way down the field, but it's a little too late, and uh, that running decision leads to fourth. Alabama just really not having troubles with anyone as of yet. Fourth and two minnesota converts but they're down by two touchdowns number 12 dropping back looking for a man he's got a man but that man couldn't come through let's try that again this time for the end zone and he's got a man chris anta ottman wow english hard touchdown all right another chance for an onside kick will at least one of these come through Sure as heck ain't that one. Not much to show for it in terms of expansion, but a win's a win. Louisiana Tech gets another crack at one. Down south, the bigger border is CU, so this is actually going to be a Louisiana Tech CU matchup. 7-7 seven, seven, CU, Louisiana Tech in a battle here. What's going to be the outcome? We'll see you come back out on top, and that big play is going to go so far. Shador to Xavier Weaver on that last one. They're pretty much in field goal range, so they can just chew clock and uh, get some yards at a time here. And you don't want to lob one up like that. Second and 10. Shador has been money in the fourth quarter and money some more. Travis Hunter for 22. Third and goal. Another read option. Sanders keeps this one himself and dives in for the go ahead touchdown with just five seconds left. See you holds on beating louisiana tech what a game and another game winning drive from sanders we've seen that a lot in imperialism so far i gotta ask is shador your ea college football 25 cover athlete battle after battle cu keeps expanding and their land goes far notre dame back on the clock and the arrow is pointing to the right in the biggest border on their right is going to be a battle against Bama. This might just be the first time I've seen Bama with their back against the wall. Third and four. He's going for a big play. Notre Dame's defense just giving Milrow and Bama fits on offense and uh, the fits continue and that's a turnover. I expect to run here every time just trying to burn the timeouts but third and nine they just want to go for the jugular and they don't get it. This is in field goal range so if the kicker can nail it it's it's over either way he got it bingo with just 10 seconds left it is a little too late no matter what milro does there and that tackle behind the line of scrimmage is going to end it well there goes probably a lot of folks favorite to win it all alabama is no longer notre dame just waited for the right opportunity to strike and they have come out in a big way texas tech let's see what you got to the right is nothing but CU land. Man, there have been a few teams just kind of hiding out for most of this thing, BYU being one of them, Fresno State, South Alabama, the Beavers, like Duke, those schools in particular have had an easy path. Oh my goodness, your eyes are not deceiving you. CU is in danger and the Red Raiders could walk away. This is not a drill. Red Raiders get a first down. This thing's over. Read option. He is going to get it. Oh my gosh, and run him over. What a insane change of events here in Mars Imperialism. Texas Tech comes after taking a lawn break and says, we're ready for CU. They're a little tired from all their matchups. And this has got to be heartbreaking for Buffs fans all across the nation because they have fought so hard. I gotta give respect where it's due. Let's give an applause to CU, man. Love them or hate them. They fought for so many games. Down go the Buffs and Texas Tech. There is a new big man on campus. I swear the craziest stuff happens at the end of imperialism at South Alabama will get a chance.
South Alabama is going to be going up against Texas Tech, the new big boy on campus. South Alabama down by 10 in this one, but they're just inside the red zone. If they hurry it up and score quick, they still got three timeouts to get a chance at glory. Second and seven, South Alabama for the slip screen gets drilled. Third and seven, dropping back to pass across the middle. He's got a first down. What a move. First and goal for South Alabama. Dropping back. Found a man. Get through. Touchdown. We still got a game. I'm not sure. You probably do go for the onside kick here. So, yep, that's what they're going to do. And... AI doesn't make it even close. Defense needs to give it everything they got on this play. Your Mars Glory's on the line, and they do make the play. Tech really is lining up here to go for a field goal. This is big. This is what, 52, 53 yards? No, that's even more, like 57 or something. I don't even, something crazy, but he got it. Now you can't just settle for the field goal. South Alabama is going to have to dial up a miracle if they wanna walk away victorious and get so much land. Second and 10, do you got anyone? You got that guy, what a move by the receiver. Just falls short of the first down line. That clock's gonna be churning. So much time coming off, but they do get a snap and sacked. This game's over. You better hurry up to the line again. You're just gonna to have to chuck one up to the end zone. Fourth and seven or just drop it. Texas Tech survives. Tech thrusted into the limelight holds on against their first challenge and that was South Alabama, but it's not gonna get easier from here on out. Speaking of not gonna be easy, Washington's still a tough opponent that hasn't played many games. Yep, and if I had to guess, they're gonna be playing Texas Tech. So back to back to back challenges for the Red Raiders. Got a good old back and forth, 14-14. Penix Jr. and the Huskies on the move. He's gonna drop back, look for a screen. It's not really there, but I guess that's something. Between the clock and the position on the field, this is really an interesting spot for time management for both sides. I mean, does Texas Tech start considering a timeout? You just don't want to see the Huskies or even field goal range just kick a winning field goal and end it. And uh, that Wildcat got him at first. So this is exactly my point. It's a tie game. Red Raiders, you're, you're pretty much gonna give up the field goal no matter what you do here. So you probably start considering taking those, no? But I guess Penix Jr. still doesn't get the memo. He wants it all. He's back and slinging it. That's the only way he knows how. I guess no one's got much situational awareness right now. Um, you can kick the field goal and win if you just shoot clock. Ah, okay, are we sure the game's not listening to me? Because as soon as I bring up situational awareness, they decide to shoot the clock. Third and six, Penix Jr. back to pass across the middle, first down and some all the way to the three. Huskies say, forget it we're not settling we want six and they're gonna run a read option Penix Jr. cuts it inside two seconds left calling that timeout field goal attempt for the win to knock off the big boys the Red Raiders could go down right here and down they go so now the Huskies take over power there's not much border in the way of them and full conquest glory Fresno State just on an island with Huskies all around them well uh, would you look at that? Washington is going to get the spin anyway. So now that they're on the attack, they're going to go down into the left. Really, there's only one school, and that's Fresno State. I guess Washington is really out for blood as they opened up a can of a whoop on the Fresno State Bulldogs. No point sticking around any further. Bulldogs are eliminated. Washington is one step closer to glory. Fresno State, thanks for playing. Your island has been eradicated. Washington has taken over. The other big boy in town, Notre Dame. Up and to the left, winner of Washington, Notre Dame is gonna have pretty much 90% of the map. Drama and suspense are building this one. Notre Dame, third and 15, sacked by the Huskies. It's a strip sack, fumble. And I think that's recovered by the Huskies in prime real estate position. Notre Dame had Washington without any timeouts and they were this close to finishing him off. But Penix Jr. gets a chance. He goes across the middle, touchdown. It is getting exciting out here. Can the Irish do anything out here to respond after that quick turn of events? Strip sack, fumble, touchdown on the next play third and 20 they're handing it off so you leave it up to fourth and 18 now what are you gonna do another handoff no you don't hand it off that time but you hand it off on third and 18 you guys just cost yourself the game washington wins questionable play calling at the end by notre dame but that doesn't take away from washington's brilliant performance and impressive comeback in the brink of extinction 
they come through and now are massive shareholders of this map. Will any of these final teams have a shot against the Huskies? Well, Tulane, let's see what you can do. Tulane heading down, guess what? They get their crack at Washington. Tulane, green wave, tied up 14-14. Pratt tries to keep it himself, gets dropped. But the storyline developing in this one is it's all knotted up. So Tulane putting in a good effort against UW. And what is this quarterback doing? That is some atrocious play calling in my opinion. Third and 23, and they... <laughs> Three straight quarterback draws. I guess I take all my compliments back. Tulane, what was that? With that atrocity of a play call out of the way, Penix Jr. was able to get the ball back, get down the field, and it looks like you guys are about to lose. Hold on. Are the Huskies going to do even a worse blunder and not call a timeout? They had one. What are they doing? This game is getting silly. Can the Green Wave turn something around here? He's got an open receiver. He throws him to the ground. Can the Green Wave get ahead in overtime? That would be huge for them. And their imperialism runs. And Michael Pratt this time keeps it and scores. Good decision running the ball this time. It all comes down to defense for the Wave. If they can stop them, great. If not, it's going to double OT. Penix dropping back over the middle. It's just such a routine play for those two. Touchdown. I think we're all aware that Washington's got this offense that is hard to stop when they get going. So this third down is big. Tulane better be ready for anything. More than likely a pass because it's third and sort of long. They're going deep. He's got a man first and goal. Washington's starting to cook and uh, they want to tap this one off with a score, but that is a big play. Minus four after that one. It's about second and five to go. Penix is going to pass. He keeps it and he is sacked. Darius Hodges with a big play on that one. It's another third down. Will the Green Wave get the stop this time and a halfback draw on like third and nine to go? Guess they're settling for three. Great defense from the Wave in double overtime. Can their offense top this one off? It doesn't make sense. Why is the game doing this? They kick a field goal. Washington gets the ball back and throws a touchdown pass. I guess I have to resim this one now. Come on, man. What is it going on? It's just a little disheartening because like the outcome, we never know now. It could have been different. Third and nine. Pratt looking across the middle. He's got a man and he stretches for that first down. Empty set. Second and 10. 26 seconds left. There's no timeouts for these guys. And they just throw a back-breaking pick. Washington wins. Bug or not, I am a little bummed. Washington does get the win. It's nothing against Husky fans. It's just like two lanes and underdog. And it could have been different. Miami is on deck. Not many more options to go to. Headed downward. Miami is going to play. Virginia Tech has got the most land that borders down of Miami. Little rivalry action here at the end of Mars Imperialism. And uh, I know I've said it before, but Miami is kind of scary. Just in the select few games that they've played, they've been efficient and they're beating guys by a couple touchdowns. Watch out for the Hurricanes as they beat Virginia Tech and move in to a spot in the final six. Let's pin the last six teams and we're getting one step closer to a winner. And I was wondering when anything was gonna happen regarding to BYU. BYU, Washington, what's gonna happen here? BYU keeping it close with UW. Third and six right now for the Cougars. And uh, back-breaking interception. We've seen that before. Washington defense steps up. Burning the rest of their timeouts and making a stand on defense. BYU gets one last crack at it, and uh, that big sack is going to put them in a difficult spot here. No timeouts for them to call, as I mentioned. They're just going to have to heave one up on third and 17 or dump it to the running back. Man, you're just going to need to take your shot. It's fourth and seven. Try to get the first down. You got it, I think. Can BYU find themselves a miracle second and 10? You got to get a chunk play here. That was almost picked again, but you just wasted all the clock. I don't think you have time to get another snap off. That's game. Washington wins. Couple close scares for Washington, but a close scare doesn't matter when they just keep winning. And then there were five. We started with every FBS game in the game, and now we're down to these five schools, and Miami is up. The only school really to the left that they border the most is Washington. So 
Here we go again. Miami has Washington on the ropes, but good news for Husky fans. You're down at the first and goal line. Read option, Penix Jr. for six. So they're right back in it. It's all tied up. If Miami wants to be serious here in the big dance, the ball is in their court. They can win it. Second and 13. How serious are they about getting this win? And oh my goodness, have we seen this before? Even the same guy, another pick. But if the defense can step up here for Miami, maybe you get another shot. You have a lot of timeouts left. Penix Jr.'s found a man though, that's game. Four, three, two, one. Are they not gonna get... Washington could have won. It's overtime now. And watch, I could get hit with the overtime bug too. It's Miami's lucky day as there have been some bad blunders on both sides by the AI logic. Third and 10, it feels like to me, Miami's a really run heavy school. Forced to pass here, going across the middle. He's got him open. Touchdown number three. That is huge in overtime. Washington scores here. I might get struck with a double overtime bug. Knock on wood. Please no. Uh, but Uda dropping back to pass. First down. See that we're getting one step closer to a score. First in goal, Penix going to the outside. He's got a man and blocks. Touchdown. That was easy. And I hit Sim and Miami wins. So I think this time it wasn't a bug. I just chose not to sit around and watch the extra point attempt and the kicker misses the extra point. Not a joke, no bigger stage than this. That's heartbreaking for Washington fans. That's heartbreaking. Can confirm looking at the log of the game. It was a touchdown to Boston. We saw that. I chose not to stick around for the extra point attempt and he missed it. Miami is thanking their lucky star after that because that just gives them the biggest piece of land anyone's ever had in Mars imperialism. Here's what Miami's land looks like. They got two islands, the beavers and the blue devils who've kind of just been hiding this whole imperialism, waiting for the right moment to strike, I guess. And then Syracuse, who's had quite the run in the top right. So these are the final four teams. Don't go anywhere just yet. This is the juiciest part of imperialism. Duke leading us off in the final four. Don't even know why I spin the wheel because they're in an island and surrounded by hurricanes. So they're going to have to go up against Miami. Duke hitting a hard time against the hurricanes down by 10. It's a fourth and five play right here for the Blue Devils. And what a play by the defensive line. Miami will hold and win. The hurricane. Cane force type wins were too much for the Blue Devils and their island just goes underwater. Who is going to have control amongst the final three in Miami has their destiny in front of them. Down into the left, well, it doesn't make sense to go up into the right. So it's going to be Miami versus Oregon State. In essence, Syracuse has clinched a berth in the championship imperialism game for Mars. That's crazy. On paper, according to the college football revamped rosters, Miami is actually kind of comparable to Oregon State's overall as well. So this won't be an easy matchup. And what a shocking turn of events. The Beavers come out of hibernation and what a run there. These Beavers ain't messing around. First and goal drained Miami of all their timeouts. Chewing clock off the map and off the radar for most of this imperialism run. They have come alive in the final game before the championship. For all those rooting for the Beavers, go crazy because you guys have just clenched a spot in the championship game to face Syracuse. Can't get too comfortable in imperialism as Miami is downed and Oregon State gets to break free from their island. It is their land now. And we got a good old Syracuse Oregon State matchup. Who would have thought? This is what hours and hours of imperialism leads to for all the Mars glory to have a chance at the Imperialism Hall of Fame. We have the Oregon State Beavers taking on the Syracuse Orange. And if you're still watching at this point, you're a real one. And I highly recommend you go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I bring a lot of fresh content like this. The Martians are pumped about this one. They've been begging the NCAA to bring this tournament to them for a while now. Time for kickoff and we are underway. We're going to be watching a great majority of this one. First and 10 for the orange, snapping it and throwing it very quick, but going nowhere. Syracuse, not really well known for their offense, a decent defense. They're going to be changing that in the portal with uh, Kyle McCord coming over. We shall see how that works out for them, but in college football revamps, Syracuse has just gotten here by opportune plays, big defensive stops, and that's an opportunistic catch and first down. Third and four, dropping back, 
not getting anything there he's gonna lose some yards they're gonna have to punt and there's that beavers defense making a name for themselves early two minute quarters will come and go pretty quick so keep in mind the martians are on a sped up clock in this format two minutes it's like two years for them so they need the action quick dj and the beavs went backwards on that last one so curious to see what the rest of this drive looks like and that's a big run but they're gonna punt second and 10 orange looking for a man they got him across the middle third in short carrot schrader is gonna have to be a star in this one and the option worked to perfection their big run the first half is always feeling each other out but i have a feeling that drama is going to intensify in the second half for sure little handoff draw gets five if you're syracuse you need to at a minimum get into field goal range but i mean if you got a chance i wouldn't stop there third and six here they come, going kind of deep. He's got a step. No, great deflection, great comeback there by the DB. And that sets up a field goal opportunity. This one, at a glance, looks pretty deep. About 52 yards. Does he have the leg? And he does, nails it. Syracuse draws early blood, three zip. But the Beavs have three timeouts and 40 seconds to work with. What do the Beavers have in store for us with a little one-minute drill? They got a wide-open guy and a 10-yard snag. Dropping back found a man and another first down these guys are cruising pretty quick you're syracuse this is probably a pretty bad time to play some prevent defense or, or whatever this is there's a lot of holes speaking of holes another snag going deep going for a big one and he's got it all breaking a tackle 42 yards and six for ghoul 10 seconds left in the half i'll be surprised if anything really big happens out of it and yeah qb just keeps it and definitely in the beeves favor here scoring a big touchdown they get the ball to start second half and they sure as heck want some more points on the board i know that second and 10 syracuse defense looking to make a stop but dj's got so much space and a first down all by himself new set of downs a little bit of play action here he's got all day to throw and he hits a big strike to number 13. syracuse known for their defense in college football revamp this is a bad time to vanish the defense can make up for all of it right now on third and four hold them to at least a field goal you don't want them to get a first down fresh set of downs first and goal to go Hand off to the running back, seven easy yards. Beavers this close to putting it on ice. Eight seconds left in the third, another handoff, and it's just so easy right now. Wow, that was gash after gash. Syracuse fans, do you believe in miracles? You need one or two from your offense in this game alone, and that's a good start. The hard part is now that you're down big, it's like you have to score a touchdown stop them on defense and score again it's a lot to ask for in two minutes and this beaver defense isn't going to go anywhere second 18 minute 30 left just dumping one off it's now 39 if you're a beaver fan you have a pretty good feeling about this one if you're an orange fan it's not looking too good dropped again defense stepping up big for the beavers beavers want mars bad they need to stake their flag on the planet and claim it for all beaver glory first beaver to mars man and it starts here cracking open the champagne and celebrating because it's over you guys are looking like a machine and syracuse has nothing to say about it my heart goes out to you syracuse you guys had a nice cinderella run but oregon state was opportunistic at the right times so beaver fans you guys have just claimed yourself a planet i think in the unlikeliest of fashions you saw how much that map changed from start to finish I wasn't even considering the Beavers until I saw them still hanging in there in the top 10. But there it is. Beavers are victorious. Congratulations. I have to hold up my end of the bargain and go buy myself a Beaver jersey to wear in one of my upcoming videos. So congrats to you guys. And last, just for satisfaction's sake, to say we completed it, Oregon State, there it is. The last one standing on the Mars turf. And since Damian Martinez was a big piece of this Beaver offense, the running back for the Beavs, we're gonna snag his jersey and that's what we're going with.